go through a series of very successful high power output pitchers and we're just going to go through these guys and observe timing positioning um, of the lead leg block mechanics starting with Garrett Cole okay so I'm I'm focused on a couple different things when I go through these screenings of lead leg block mechanics first thing I see or first thing I'm looking for is the efficient drive leg mechanics because as I mentioned within drive leg mechanics we want our drive leg to be our gas pedal okay we do not want the lead leg to be our gas pedal we don't want the lead leg the lead foot to get aggressive in regards to you know jumping out in um, and essentially manipulating acceleration so first thing I'm looking for is drive leg acceleration so with Cole um, it's fairly easy to screen a guy like Cole, right? Does a lot of things really well. So you can see that the lead leg, the lead foot is very, you know, neutral. It's, um, it's kind of just a byproduct of the, the drive leg and what he's doing throughout his drive phase. A couple things you can notice within his front foot positioning and the posture of the hips and the pelvis is it's close, right? So he's going to be moving lateral here good stability of this drive leg and now really keening on um, a concept regarding the lead leg block mechanics is rotation into front foot strike you're going to see that right here as the pelvis unwinds the foot's going to slightly open up into front foot strike and it's not and and now this is one of the more lenient things in regards to efficient lead leg block mechanics because it doesn't necessarily have to happen all the time but um, just a commonality that I see that, uh, that helps aid in efficient lead leg block mechanics is rotating into front foot strike rather than rotation then front foot strike. Um, usually guys that have the front foot like open earlier through the drive phase um, is a indication of early pelvis unwinding, which will then put them in a posture that's not as optimal uh, upon anchor point. Okay, so there's that. We'll, we'll hopefully dive into that a little bit as well. Next thing you're going to notice is the 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 actual positioning um, and how the front foot lands. Okay, so I explained this in the explainer video. I kind of teach land with your front foot in in such a way that makes sense to be as sturdy and stable as possible. Right. So for me, it's going to be land with like the whole entire front foot. It's going to give yourself the best opportunity, in my opinion, to efficiently block that, uh, that forward energy. Okay. So you'll see a lot of guys maybe have a breakdown stemming from landing with like their toe, which promotes a little bit of instabilities or landing with the heel, um, which could then, you know, jar the, the lead leg and, and screw up the, uh, the timing. I, it, it goes without saying that there's not really one set of like way to throw hard though, right? There's, there's a lot of different, um, different ways to go about optimal pitching mechanics and it's going to vary per individual. So always have that in mind. All right. So landing, uh, here sturdy with the lead foot, you're going to see that he lands into knee flexion right? So the, the knee is flexed. It's not in extension. And now you can see the, just the, the positioning of everything, the hips slightly open, roughly 45 pelvis is now going to rotate over this fixed femur. What I mean by that is the femur is in a fixed position. It's not moving. It's stable there. And now you're going to see the alignment of his trunk and the, the timing of his arm action mechanics all influence the lead leg block. So force into the ground. Now we block this forward energy and we almost try to get to where we're sending energy in the opposite direction to send that up the chain. Pelvis rotates over the fixed femur, no knee valgus. And now, as I mentioned, the most force um, in the lead leg, like in the, in the ground with the lead leg block is at the timing of shoulder external rotation. So then you have all of this force to be sent up and used by the arm. Okay. And now you can see as he goes into release, knee gets into uh, knee extension here as kind of a byproduct. Now the trunk alignment 
and the arm and the hand positioning has a lot to do with this. Obviously, if too early or too late, the everything's going to be kind of thrown off, right? And then you're going to have to force specific movements to accomplish an efficient lead leg block. Same thing really with any kind of component within the delivery, timing and positioning, right? And we just got to train as much efficient motor patterns and movement patterns as possible to replicate this the best that we can. So, um, and now, like I said, with the external rotation, and so now the trunk alignment has a lot to do as well in regards to getting to the point where we can then get our trunk flexion late launch over the lead knee, chest over the lead knee, and knee extends, and trail leg hip extends as well. So that's Garrett Cole. 